Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It is so good to see you all. I was off for a couple of weeks there at the end of the summer. Many thanks to Pastor Kay and Pastor Jenny for uh, leading worship in my stead. And it sounds like you all had a good time. I heard that uh, everybody had a little party with Pastor Jenny. Hasn't seen her in a while, so happy for that. Uh, welcome to the start once again of our Sunday school year, our program year. It's called Rally Day. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but we all kind of rally back together again after the summer and all the vacations and activities of the summer months that have us going in all different directions. So welcome back. Uh, a few things to say about Rally Day. First of all, uh, thank you to everybody who joined us down in the fellowship hall before service for our Rally Day kickoff event. It was the that worship is kingdom practice. If you don't know what that means, I won't make you do it because I heard your grumbling. But I taught everybody some phrases and hand motions to go with them. So just raise your hand if you were there. Ask one of those people raising their hand what we did, and maybe they'll remember it. Show you during the piece or something. It's not the Macarena, but it has about the same number of hand motions. All right. But thank you to everybody who was there for that to get us kicked off, and we learned that what we do in worship every week, it's not just Sunday school that we learn stuff. The actions of worship teach us how to be the family of God out in the world. So ask one of the folks that was there to explain that a little more. Uh, next week, we will begin our program year. We'll have elementary Sunday school classes in Miss Wendy's room, which is kind of next to the bathrooms. Uh, we'll have the middle and high school youth with Miss Becky in the classroom next to the kitchen. And then the adult class will be in the large classroom in the hallway here. All Souls has got a really cool setup, a really neat curriculum that they're starting this year for their young kids. And they're going to use the small classroom on this side of the hallway. And I hope you get a chance to walk down the hall and see uh, what was accomplished. Uh, back in the spring, the church council was saying, hey, we've got this memorial money. It should be used. People gave it to be used. Some of it was for painting. And so we said, let's do that. And then we kind of got busy for summer. But then we hired some painters and check out the five classrooms, the four classrooms in the nursery, and look at the fresh coat of paint on the walls. Crews came in and cleaned things out, uh, got rid of some old furniture that was falling apart. It looks amazing. And before next Sunday, we'll finish putting all the furniture back together for our first week of regular classes. So thank you to, let's see, it was Susie and the Shaws and uh, who else? Anita and... Uh, Rosalie and I did a little, um, but Becky, Wendy, everybody worked so hard on it. It looks great. So go check out the fresh coat of paint. Emily got the painter, Emily got the painter and he was, they were great. So it looks great. It freshens and brightens it up. It opens those rooms up. Very excited. Uh, what else? Um, and we're welcoming some new members today on this rally day. So uh, share the love with John and Margie and Andrea and Brittany and we've got some a little recognition for them later, and some uh, bags full of Messiah Lutheran swag to give them too, as we welcome them into the congregation. There are so many announcements. Eagle-eyed bulletin readers will notice that the announcements are even in a slightly smaller font to make them all fit. So, in case that's too small for you to read, I'm gonna take a deep breath and hit the highlights here. Please register for EPIC. EPIC is a, uh, an event that the Synod is bringing back and it stands for Effective Practices for Innovative Congregations. It's getting folks sitting down together, talking about different ways in which we can make our congregations more vital, connecting to each other, to our communities, to God. I invite you to sign up. It's free except for lunch. I think it's $10 for lunch. So one of the sessions will be in Richmond on November, where is it? Second. November 2nd from 9 to 2. Um, I'm going to be teaching two of the workshops. Uh, my wife, Liz, is coordinating and running the whole thing, so I have a little insider information that's going to be pretty good. So uh, please sign up to, to do that. It's for everybody. Um, also coming up is the 2024 All Lutheran Women's Retreat. That's for all the different flavors of Lutheranism. That will be on November 7th to the 9th in Glen Allen, so nice right in our backyard for that too. Uh, Lay Ministry Academy, that's if you have some gifts for ministry that you've maybe never had a chance to try out or that you've always been curious about. If you want to do some preaching or find a congregation that is in need of somebody to help in terms of uh, ministering to the to uh, hospital visits, sharing communion, things like that, 
applications for this round of the Lay Ministry Academy close tomorrow. So if you have any questions about that, if you've wondered or prayed or discerned about using your gifts for ministry before, come and talk to me. I'd be happy to have that conversation. Uh, this coming Wednesday, there is a concert. Uh, it's 9-11. It's an annual 9-11 uh, concert at Walnut Grove Baptist Church, which is on Cold Harbor Road at Lee Davis. It's at 7 o'clock. The Hanover High School String Orchestra will present the concert, and uh, there's uh, donations and non-perishable food for MSEF. This is a big, giant fundraiser for MSEF. Am I right? That's right. So uh, MSEF does so much work in the community. You all do so much already. Next Sunday's Manna Sunday. Please read the list of what to bring for that. But this Wednesday is the concert uh, at Walnut Grove Baptist. Uh, what else do we got going on? Um, it is the 50th anniversary of the World Hunger Ministry of our denomination. And in honor of that, we have a Bible study coming up this month. You can join Pastor Kelly Baird Derek online uh, t for, I think it's two sessions. Yep, uh, Bible study on feeding the world through ELCA World Hunger. Um, we're going to start a class next Sunday for adults. We're calling it Grounded and Grand of the Power of Parables. We're going to look at some of Jesus' parables, how they're grounded in everyday stuff, but grand in terms of what they mean for people. Uh, women's Bible study is also getting started back up again, and they're multiplying like mitosis and cells. That's right, my kids are in biology this year. So... Um, Instead of just having one evening session, they're splitting. There's going to be a morning and an evening, help with people's schedules. Uh, the group is getting so big, that's a great problem to have. But then if it's a big group, not as much conversation sometimes. So split it into two groups, morning and evening. Talk to Nancy and Rosalie, right? No? Not Rosalie. You passed the baton. Marilyn. Marilyn. Talk to Marilyn. There she is. Talk to Marilyn and Nancy about that. Speaking of Nancy, she's got a couple things going on right now. She has taken the baton from our first banner to help lead brainstorming and construction of another banner. If you'd like to use some crafty gifts or learn some crafty gifts, please talk to Nancy. She's got some ideas to get the ball rolling um, for the banner, the next banner team thing. Do we have a meeting set yet? Today we're going to meet to have the big day. I should just read the thing in front of me, shouldn't I? <laughs> All right, so just to hang out after worship to pick a date. If you have any interest or questions, uh, stick around after worship. Talk to Nancy. And then also, if you like to sing and you are a youthy person, uh, we're trying to get together a youth choir. So if you have gifts of singing or maybe even instruments, uh, maybe you don't want to be a part of the group, but you want to play music, special music in church sometime, please talk to Nancy about that to form the choir. You can also talk to Debbie about your instruments and how to use those. That's for all ages if you want to do special music. But particularly for the youth choir, please talk to Nancy about that. Um, it says, sing, sing, sing. Uh, looking for young members of Messiah under the age of 21 might be interested in joining others to sing occasionally during worship. Um, while we're talking about singing, choir starting back up again too this week. Ah, what else? Uh, Sunday school. We could use some substitutes when the Sunday school teachers are out. We've been saying that for a while. If somebody volunteers, we'll stop talking about it. So uh, we need a couple substitutes for that. Uh, what else do we have going on? Uh, Gentiva Hospice is in need of volunteers. And um, thank you for everybody who donated school supplies to the foster kids to Encircle. Uh, they're very grateful, and we had a good turnout for that. Uh, worship team is meeting on September 22nd after church. Shepherd's team is meeting September 15th, next week after church. And uh, we had a scavenger hunt for our brandly updated, refurbished website. I think at least 10 people. More than 10 people did it. We will announce our winner of who got the most right in the quickest time for the scavenger hunt at the end of the service. And finally, Donna, do you want to talk about the... Do you want me to do it now? For the clothes? Messiah. For the Messiah wear? Yeah, do you want me to do it now or at the end of the service? Let's do it now. Okay. okay. Uh, you're going to see some stuff on the table out there that's pretty cool. Yeah, we'll do the scavenger hunt at the end. Okay. We'll do the clothes now. Come on up. And does anybody else have an announcement before I run out of gas, before I even start? All right. Thank you, Donna. Okay. I'll, I'll give you a break. Um, today we are starting uh, our first Messiah Wear campaign in a while. And we are going to be offering T-shirts, uh, uh, pullover hoodies, and polo shirts. And the caveat I have to tell you is that all ink and embroidery will be done in white. So you can choose your color but make sure you choose a color that, that that's going to show up on. 
Um, so it starts today. The sign-ups are out in the um, fellowship hall or narthex on a table, and uh, you just need uh, name, size, and color, and how many. And then we'll, we'll place the order at the end of the month, so you have until the end of September to place an order, and uh, we'll we'll see what we we get. So thanks a lot. If you have any questions, just see me. Thanks. Thank you, Donna. Anybody else? That's a lot of announcements, I know, but that's exciting, right? We've got things going on in our community, in the wider synod, even beyond that. It's a good time of year as everything gets going again. So I hope that you find something to hit your wagon to, find your niche, uh, find a Bible study or a ministry that you want to get involved with and uh, get it going for this new start on this rally day. Uh, let's start our time of worship together, too. Uh, I invite you to stand as you're able. We will begin, as we usually do, with confession and forgiveness, but after the season of Easter and all through the summer doing the Heartland Liturgy, the Texas Kyrie and all that, we're going to let that rest for a while. We'll come back to it again another time, and we're going to revisit uh, something in your hymnals at setting six that we did last fall. So uh, hopefully it comes back to you. If it's new, we'll pick it up together, um, but we're switching it up for the new, new season that starts today. Uh, after all that, let's take a moment to just prepare our hearts and minds for worship. As we gather today, we are going to start with an invocation. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw near to us with grace in time of need and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Our gathering song, I know we, everybody started school a couple of weeks ago now, but this is sort of a, a back-to-school song in the church. It's called Earth and All Stars. You're going to hear a lot of classroom language in this song. It's number 731.
I invite you to turn to your hymnals, if you're in one of the small bulletins, to page 165. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. All right, let's see if you remember this. In peace, let us pray to gets us rolling a little bit, it gets us moving, it's been almost a year, you did great. I think we should pray. It's time to pray together with the prayer of the day, and uh, it should be in your bulletins, so let us pray. 
Gracious God, throughout the ages, you transform sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to proclaim your promises to the whole world. Through Jesus Christ, our healer and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Isaiah 34, verses 4 through 7a. These verses are a word of hope to the exiles in Babylon. Isaiah 34 portrays God's vengeance on Edom, Israel's age-old enemy, which makes the path from Babylon to Zion safe for the exiles' return. The desert itself will flow with water to give drink to the returning exiles. A reading from Isaiah. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. At the burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from James chapter 2 verses 1 through 17. Faithful Christians do not show partiality to the rich and powerful of the world especially at the expense of the poor and weak. Likewise, faith does not pay mere lip service, lip service to God's will. Instead, a living Christian faith expresses itself in acts of compassion and mercy for those in need. A reading from James. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in the fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves? and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you. You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, but if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but do not, do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, 
Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs. What is the good of that? So faith by itself has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. We stand for the gospel acclamation on page 171. today comes from the seventh chapter of Mark. In Mark's gospel, encounters with women usually signify turning points in Jesus' ministry. Here, a conversation with a Syrophoenician woman marks the beginning of his mission to the Gentiles. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice, but a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now, the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought him to a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hands on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then, looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephaphtha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and I invite any children who are here to come on up. I'm going to have you keep standing this time. I'm going to act something out, maybe. All right. Come on up. All right, four of you. That should work. We can make this work. Excellent. All right. So I don't know if you heard, but the story we just told about Jesus is kind of strange. Did you hear, this? Did you hear the strangeness? It's what he says that was strange. This, this one always makes me wonder. But before we get to that, let's back up a little bit. So Jesus goes and he meets uh, a woman. And Jesus was Jewish. He was, you know our Bibles, the Old Testament and the New Testament? The Old Testament was the Bible for a long time, right? It was the Bible that they all read the Bible, uh, Jesus and the disciples. But uh, the New Testament hadn't been written down yet. It, it was happening live. <laughs> like Jesus was the New Testament. They hadn't written down those stories yet. So he was like, well, in the Bible, uh, God promised a savior that's me. And God promised the Savior to the people who read this Bible. And this woman says, well, can you heal my daughter? And he's like, well, but you're not one of the people that I came for. And he says something kind of weird. He, he uses a weird expression. He says, well, should the children's food go to the dogs? Like, I came to feed these people. You're a dog? Like, that's kind of weird, right? That he would say that. But she says, well, even the dogs get the crumbs that fall from the table. And he's like, you know what? You really believe that I'm the Messiah. Your daughter's healed, and from then on, everybody, not just the Jewish people, not just the ones that read that Bible, 
everybody had a chance to get Jesus' good stuff. So I want to try this um, crumbs thing. Uh, I need two people to make a table with their arms. Can you go like this? Who wants to be the table? You want to be a table? I think you need to be a table too. You're the closest in height. So you two come here. I want you to go like this with your arms and make a square. There you go. Okay, there are the table. You two are eating dinner. So you can each have half of this roll. Take that. Take that. You guys ever play house? All right, you come right here. You come around on this side. And I'm going to be the dog under the table. All right. So luckily this table has no wood or anything. So I want you to start eating the bread. And I'm going to try to catch the crumbs. So like tear this bread up into little pieces. And we'll see if I can catch any. And I'm the dog because I don't want any of you to choke. All right. In case a crumb falls in your throat. So just start tearing the bread up over the table. You're having fun, you're eating, you're playing house. Ah. Uh, oh no, that didn't get close. All right, try again, a little farther this way. I can move over. Ah. Oh, so close. Try again. Oh, you got it. Ah. You want to try one? Oh, so close again. One more. Oh, off the lip. Okay, we better stop before we have to get the vacuum. All right, thank you. You want a vacuum? All right, I'm sure the floor is pretty clean. Ow. I'm going to eat that crumb. So, oh, thank you. Do you, anybody want a piece of bread? It's a Hawaiian roll. They're really good. You got some? OK, well, I'll eat, I'll eat a bite. So even God's crumbs, Jesus' crumbs, are like a whole meal. Even a little bit of God's love is enough to fill us up. And so. Maybe that's what Jesus was trying to say, or maybe that's what the woman helped him figure out. Oh, I should have had a drink. Was that even a little crumb of God's love can fill us up and make it, make it all better. I still don't understand why Jesus said that, but at the end of the story, her daughter got healed, and then everybody started to get not just crumbs, but the whole feast of God's love. So I have two things for you. First one is just the normal activity page that you guys can do. So here you go. You need three. Okay, there you go. You want one? Do you have a sister with you today? There you go. There you go. Okay. All right, wait, wait, don't go. I got more. And then I want you to take two pieces of paper and I want you to. Six. Six. I get it. There you go. Here's one, two for you. So one of these pieces of paper, yeah, grab a glue stick. You're going to have to share the glue sticks. Two for you? No, you get two. And does your sister want one too, you think? All right, two more for her. One piece of paper, you're going to have like that. And the other one, you're going to tear up into little pieces. You guys ever made a mosaic? Yeah. So I want you to make crumbs out of little pieces of paper and color each one whatever color you want and then use the glue stick to make some kind of picture, whatever you want to do, something, something full of love, all right? All right, there's crayons back there. There's glue sticks right here. There's more paper I'll put on the chair. Thank you so much for coming up and trying to drop crumbs into my mouth. You can do it at your house? Great, sounds like a plan. And I am sorry for making such a mess on the floor. It's okay, it's just crumbs. Right, we'll set these here. Oh, I really did make a mess, didn't I? There we go, I got the worst of it.
rally day isn't really a thing. You might have a political rally. Isn't there something like a road rally? Is there something like a race? Yeah. yeah. But rally day, nobody says that unless you're doing something like we are today. Um, you can rally the troops, rally the crowd, energize people to do something together. But rally day is a church thing. It's a celebration. Rally day is a in 
body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people, following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace on all the earth. Sisters and brothers in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people in this place? If so, please say, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for these new members in their life in Christ? If so, please say, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do. Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. Awaken in our communities of faith a spirit of radical hospitality. Encourage our churches to celebrate and embrace people of diverse backgrounds, experiences, and abilities. Deepen our commitment to ecumenical and interreligious partnerships. Hear us, O oh God. Bring forth water to nourish plants and animals in places suffering from drought. Renew our commitments to protect rivers, lakes, and streams, and make us good stewards of water in our homes and communities. Preserve wetland habitats and the creatures that make their homes there. Hear us, O God. Inspire leaders of cities, nations, and tribes to lead with wisdom and humility. Bring peace among peoples in conflict and strengthen global commitments to nonviolent solutions. Guide all who seek refuge from war to a safe haven. Hear us, O oh God. Comfort all who live with chronic illness. Surround them in your tender embrace and sustain all who provide ongoing care and support. Bring hope and healing to people struggling with addiction and nourish the spirits of all who are in recovery. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Nurture in all people the gift of your creating spirit. Inspire artists and musicians, woodworkers and quilters, poets and dancers. Revive those whose artistic wells have run dry and enliven all who doubt their creative talents. Hear us, O oh God. We give you thanks for all who have died and now find their rest in you. May their faithful witness guide us in our daily life with you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is Gracious God, you created us to live in community. Bless our families in all their shapes and sizes. Sustain and strengthen all our communal connections. We especially pray this week for the Griffiths, Gunn, and Gustafson families, as well as our Messiah family. Grant all help where needed, and foster love and appreciation in your mercy. Oops. Um, we pray for each other. Debbie, Bruce, Adam, Bonnie, Angel, Ted, Jackie, Stephen, Sue, Jeffrey, Karen, Patrick, Ruth, Ken. We pray for our extended family and neighbors. JC, Jessica, Dwayne, Marilyn, Madeline, Debbie, Griffin, Jameson, 
Ginger, James, Ethan and family, Bubba, Michelle and Tevin, Becky, Iris, Junie, Janet, Sandy, Diane, Tim, Jim, Addison, Brad, Marina, George, Mike. We pray for our veterans, their fellow soldiers, and their waiting families. We pray for all law enforcement, firefighters, and first responders. We pray for the people and pastor, Reverend Catherine of All Souls Episcopal, and our shared ministry. We pray for all those impacted by acts of violence at home and abroad. We pray for all who travel. Hear us, O God. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay, um, well, I know you're just waiting with bated breath, but you're going to wait just a second longer because I need to let you know also that we have some Messiah, I'll say swag today. We have pins, we have new car decal stickers, plus a few of the old ones that we gave out last year. They're in a basket on the table where you'll sign up to get Messiah wear. So look for all of that. It's on a table in the narthex. Um, in terms of the winner today, uh, it's Valerie Williams. She was the first one in with all correct answers. But everyone who completed the website, uh, Scavenger Hunt, does get something. So there'll be little blue bags out there. If you've done that, grab one. It's yours. So thank you. Thanks for all the participation. Go in peace, serve the Lord.